here, here I am thinking, how can I make Google Chrome faster? And y'all are gaming and all the 1080p. And I'm like, I mean, I do have, uh, you know, things that I do on the desktop. I do crunch video. I do. So having a faster processor makes sense for me. Less on the gaming front, because I mean, how fast can you run Tetris? But uh, the web browsing. And, and, and there is an impact. There, there, It was shown years ago that getting you know faster memory or faster CPU actually can impact your web browsing because it yeah. it does render faster whether you're talking javascript or just page loading in general like things happen faster so as 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 silly as that might sound my killer app is basically the web browser i know that's crazy the desktop for me is 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 the killer app and i know i'm 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 i don't fit in with all you gamers Getting but at least you can the fps of the desktop i'm more than that i'm pushing like 144 <laughs> But all the more reason that we we did what we did or decided to do uh, with the, the live stream on, on Twitch, the 24-7 stream, anybody can join, much like this podcast, anybody can join and stream them playing video games or doing something like 3D printing or just hang out in general. It's a 24-7 it's, it's a geek out uh, on Twitch. But yeah, you could, right now, actually, I mean, because we're just recording the podcast separately, but we've got Queso playing, he's still doing his uh, Star Wars Galaxies. Mike's doing some retro game. Infasort is playing a VR farming simulator. People are playing video games together on the screen at the same time. It's it's a thing. So I, I'm not passing judgment at all. But yeah, thank you, uh, uh, Glendon, uh, for, for laying that out in a, a very uh, cohesive uh, capacity. Sure. Thank you. Uh, so that, that leaves me. And, you know, I, I realized that timing may be a bit off for everybody. I certainly, I'm, I'm grateful that we've had so much to share in just one broadcast. Uh, we'll work our way through refining. I'm not sure if we're going to go much beyond uh, the, the tips I'm going to lay out. You may have some ideas of, of what, you, what else you might want to talk about, unless it's bedtime for everybody. Not for me. <laughs> I'm, I'm West Coast, the best coast. But I thought I'd break down how to boost internet speeds, which is, you know, much like everything else, you're always looking to optimize. There's always some kind of bottleneck that you just don't realize is happening. There is some amount of crossover with how and what toxic laid out and, and maybe not in a, as much in, in a technical capacity but i i heard him touch upon a couple of the items that i don't think many people consider i'll begin with a very simple thing that you may not think about or maybe you do when it comes to my primary computer the system that i'm using a desktop which is a laptop that's basically being used as a desktop right i don't have a billion apps running can i handle a billion apps it's a bit egregious but can i handle more than one app at a time absolutely but everything Thing that I'm running is inevitably, well, maybe not everything, but many of the things that I might run are using the internet. They're using the connection on my system. And, and it's a little bit of data here, a little bit of data there. And so what I have done to better be able to boost my internet speeds is be very, very mindful, very careful about what I'm running on my system. This would be something that I would apply to any particular uh, device that is capable of multitasking on the network. Maybe less so with smartphones, which are a bit more efficient with data, if only because of battery life. But when you're talking about desktops, which are you know plugged in 24/7, never turned off, being mindful of all those things that you got running, whether it's you know news feeds fetching constantly in the background, social apps that are constantly fetching things in the background, you know data that's being pushed up, data that's being synchronized, data that's being uploaded. The more that you're running, it's it's it adds up. And I'm not saying it's like well, you, boy, all you have to do is exit out of this app and suddenly you get half your bandwidth back. But you know, in some cases, you might get a and I don't mean this in a security sense, but a bad actor. You may get you know something that is sucking up bandwidth that you don't even realize is sucking up bandwidth because it's running some kind of trouble shooting or it's phoning home or it's doing something that you're not monitoring necessarily because that's not a, that's not your responsibility or some would argue well it should be you know you got to pay attention to what you put on the system most people won't so i find that when people ask like what are you running on your desktop i'm like uh, i got a web browser uh <laughs> and you know so that's it i keep an eye on what's you know what's happening because i'm i'm very mindful not because in the context of what might be siphoning off bandwidth but just mindful of the resources that i happen to be using you think of like electronic devices around your house it's been recommended that if you're not going to use a device over a period of time to unplug it because there's there's something i think the, the terminology and i'm far from an electrician phantom power like the phantom draw the electricity that's taken yeah. even if you're not actively using it and I'm not 
saying that there are phantom apps that exist, but certainly the less you run on your system that might be taking up bandwidth or tapping bandwidth in ways that you're not measuring, the better off you are because the app that's not running isn't going to be tapping bandwidth. It's not going to be tapping system resources for one. And two, it's going, not going to be tapping bandwidth. So if you don't need to run it, I get it. You've got the top end system, you've upgraded the CPU, GPU, etc. But you still got to be mindful of that your bottleneck potentially being your bandwidth. And it, all it takes is one errant app doing something wacky and, and you're effectively a host. So I minimize what I'm running on any computer. And I use that term not as loosely. Computer would be like a laptop, a desktop, something where you're, you're, you're multitasking between applications. Less about the tablet, less about a media device connected to your TV, less about those smaller things. But that leads me into those smaller things that are on, on the network. I minimize what's connected and win. Like, we've got a guest room that we have in a, a, the old TV that was my first HTV that was sponsored by Microsoft at, at, from the tech conference that I ran, Gnome Dex, like, so long ago. It's a Panasonic Plasma TV, 720p, uh, it, it, and it works, it still works so well. And in that room, no one, no one ever really uses, you know, entertainment, even though it was the entertainment room in the house. But we've got a media box that's connected to it. Like, a, it was an Apple TV, but I was having problems with it, uh, with the network. I ended up swapping out for a Google TV with Chromecast, which I find to be a far more fluid experience these days and a far better TV experience than what Apple has been providing in their software. I don't want to get into that right now. That might be another top 10 list at some point in the future. But when people aren't staying over, that device is unplugged. I don't need it on the network, don't need it to run updates, don't need it to run any, don't, just don't need it taking any packets away. Even if someone was to watch something 24 seven, it wouldn't be taking up that much in terms of the bandwidth that I, I might have. Wait a minute. That much. That much. <laughs> but it's that much more. It's that much more of an issue with uh, uh, taking away something that could be used by or is wanting to be tapped by another device on the network. So if it's not something that's actively used on, on a very consistent basis, it's gone or not eliminated entirely, but it's unplugged. And because I have no problem, it's like plug, unplug, plug it back in, not that big of an issue. Some people would take it as a matter of convenience, keeping it plugged in, but not me. I believe I'm going to come back to that point and expand upon it, but not quite yet. Another thing I do is I upgrade my equipment regularly. And uh, and whether that's the uh, uh, media boxes, for example, like handling better Wi-Fi standards, wireless standards, you know, for more efficient uh, traffic, um, you know, whether it's upgrading a, a router or an appliance on the networks that basically manages the network, uh, access points. I'm still running at this stage, however, uh, Wi-Fi 6, because it's this is kind of where you are even with custom building a PC, like what's your bottleneck? Like if you upgrade your CPU, but your GPU is still down here, yeah, things might work more efficiently in certain ways, but you, you want to try to be in, in parallel as much as possible without overspending. So Wi-Fi 6 made a, a, a bit of sense a year or two ago, but most of the devices that we have, some of them are still Wi-Fi 4, some Wi-Fi 5, and a lot of the more modern devices are now Wi-Fi 6. So going Wi-Fi 6E, I've thought about it. And I'm like, well, that kind of makes sense to get into that spectrum. But a lot of our devices are still Wi-Fi 6. Moreover, Wi-Fi 7 is right around the corner in another maybe year. We're just now beginning to see Wi-Fi 7 devices, you know, creep out. And I don't know when this video is going to get watched. Maybe Wi-Fi 7. Wi-Fi 7? How can you live with that? We're on Wi-Fi 22. Like, <laughs> you, trust me, you laugh. But a lot of the videos I recorded on YouTube are over a decade old. Like I'm talking right. about like before the first iPhone was released, like that old talking about those technologies. You know, I, I realized that I would be spending not spending more than it would be worth. I, I it's on my radar as 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 soon as the, the appliance that I want is Wi Fi seven compatible, I'll be upgrading to it. It will not be the bottleneck on the network. Uh so I do uh, I do pay attention to upgrades. Yeah, firmware certainly, but like hardware that that might make things run more efficiently. Uh, I even went down to uh, upgrading. I had Cat6 uh, cables uh, on devices that were connected in a wired capacity. We have wired networking in the house. It was Cat5e. It's an older house. I'm glad to have that. I had a problem with one of the cables, Cat6 uh, cable that I had connected to the access point or one of the access points in the house. And this is actually something that I'm hoping to do another top 10 list on with someone who knows network stuff, Sinuk, who hangs out in 
in, in the live stream um, because we really, you know, went in deep about network cabling and, and, and things to watch out for. So stay tuned for that top 10 list at some point in the future. But I decided that if I was going to change out or swap out one 6A or sorry, 6 cable, there's now 6A. And I'm like, all right, well, let me eliminate that as a potential future bottleneck. So I'm always looking to upgrade equipment to stay ahead of the bottleneck. That is, you might say, well, how is that going to boost internet speed? Well, if that cable is a better cable that drops fewer packets, that boosts your internet speed. It adds up. It's iterative. Is this something that's going to get you 100 megabits like that? No, but it's something that you've just, you've got to consider the quality of the hardware that you're using on the network. Uh, and, 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 and part of that is the network infrastructure. So I'm always upgrading the equipment, like uh, the, the infrastructure, as well as, you know, constantly device, you know, standalone devices or devices that I might happen to use on a regular basis, like the, the media devices connected to a TV or, or you know, smartphones and tablets.